guys, Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Happy to have you here today. The top 20 hardest hitting defensive based AoE nukes inside the game. A lot of these champions I'm sure you've heard of, and a lot of them I'm sure you haven't. I love lists like this because sometimes those sleepers, right? Those champions that you never really gave a second thought to, maybe you just didn't realize that, boy, they hit like a truck. And the nice thing about all defensive based nukers in the game is with the increased defense, they're living longer because, yeah, they have more defense but they're also dealing more damage. You get two birds, one stone for that buff. That's why if you're ever going to be relying on a defensive base nuker for the majority of your damage, it is quintessential to have an increased defense champion on your team alongside them. So guys, without further ado, let's just jump into it here with number 20. Actually, we got to give a couple honorable mentions, right? First of all, how you guys doing, by the way? I had a great weekend. I took my son to a battleship and a submarine so cool, man. Uh, you know, thank you. If any veterans watch my uh, watch my content, uh, thank you for your service. You definitely grow a healthy appreciation after being in a submarine, being in a battleship. You know, 2,300, you know, uh, soldiers uh, would, would be in one of those battleships. It's massive, massive. You get an appreciation for how mentally taxing that must be to live at sea for a prolonged period of time as well. I'm not sure if I could do it. Anyway, had a blast there with my kiddo. We explored and uh, it was it was really good times, guys. Anyway, my honorable mentions, guys, we have to include the turtle, right? So he doesn't make the list, believe it or not. He has a, uh, a two multiplier on his A1, which is an AoE, and a three on the A2, which is an AoE. Now, the thing about all these champions, I'm gonna give you the multipliers as I talk about these champs. However, it's important to know that it's not just multipliers. It's also their base defense because that will dictate how hard they'll hit and how easy it will be to scale with percentage-based stat gear, substats, and, you know, main stats, right? So we're taking both into consideration for this video. Just note that. Uh, so Krisk, really high defense. A three multiplier is almost enough to get him into the top 20, but he doesn't. But overall, in terms of sheer damage, with two AoE attacks, uh, he can definitely be a, a nice source of damage for you guys out there. The other one who I wanted to call out, who just narrowly, he would have been number 21. So literally right off the list is Whirlum Frost King on his A2. It's a four multiplier, which is higher than some of the champions we're going to talk about. However, his base defense is a bit lower at 1233. Whirlum Frost King is an absolute beast of a champion. Don't let anybody tell you guys otherwise. Just drop in and just smack the lip. Whoop! Drop down. Snap. Oh, wow. The strength and increased defense, big versions on a three turn cooldown. Only one champion in the game has that ability, and that's him. Whirlum Frost King, also his A2 is fantastic. Uh, and as we said, it hits pretty hard. All right, let's go to number 20, guys. Number 20 is going to be none other than the champion that I'm sure nobody thought would be on this list. It is Masamoto. I actually did a guide on Masamoto if any of you guys are uh, interested in checking it out. This is a hard hitting attack here. It is a 4.1 multiplier on Steel Typhoon, an AoE with decreased attack, granted a 75% chance. At landing we'd really love to have a hundred percent but she also brings increased defense and turn meter fill uh granted on a four turn cooldown but nice to have a defensive based nuker who also has increased defense so a lot of damage mitigation with the decreased attack and increased defense and a pretty hard hitting ability as well number 19 is going to be oh an old school champion it is vala or vala vala or vala 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 i'm gonna go vala vala <laughs> Vala is a great champion really really cool high base defense for an epic especially 1409 and then on the a2 it removes all shield buffs from all enemies then attacks all enemies also has a 50 percent chance of placing a decreased defense debuff on all enemies for two turns she has a 50 50 decrease defense which is not bad on three turn cooldown for a defensive base champion right uh and she's hitting for a 3.8 multiplier on this a2 and i remind you guys again with that high base attack really really strong strong option she also has the cool shield on this champion and increased defense on this champion and turn the champion's turn meter by 50 percent as well which helps you get back to the a3 a little bit sooner so yeah ballot is a champion that i feel like a lot of guys sleep on out there and gals a lot of people sleep on uh <laughs> sleep on i know what you're thinking how did this happen? Next up, we have none other than Grimskin. He's got the poor fella had the oil spilled on him. It's like man eater, but something something spilled. Is it a spill or is it just his skin? Is it like a tattoo? Is it a birthmark? Wash, 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 wash. Either way, Grimskin, guys. 
on his A3 ability, it hits hard. It's a 3.9 multiplier, but 1421, again, very, very good base defense for an epic champion. We're used to seeing, you know, 11, 12, maybe 1300. There's not that many champions epics who are over 1400 on base defense and with a 3.9, also a 100% chance when built to removing a random buff from the target. Uh, his A3 is actually a really hard hitting ability. Not a lot of people realize that. Next up is going to be number 17 and it's none other than the girl herself. It's Umbral Enchantress. So decent de base defense, 1354. On her A2, this is a 3.6 multiplier. She would not make the list for her A2, but on the A3, the ability that locks her out, but also places provoke for two turns on all the enemies. This ability is nasty. It hits for a four multiplier on the Undying Evil. All right, number 16 is going to be none other than legendary champion. You love him. I love him. Most of you probably have him. It's Rosin Scarhide. So Rosin is one of the hardest hitting defensive uh, single target nukers in the game as well with his A1 ability. Uh, also has a decent multiplier and uh, decreased defense and weakened big version on a three turn cooldown on his shear and then on the bog down ability not only are we decreasing the turn meter by oh a hundred percent on all enemies but also it has a healthy four multiplier not too bad 13 10 base defense can hit pretty hard not to mention all that control you're getting from his kit as well the next one guys is going to be none other than iron barago where are you where are you uh, there you are Iron Brago. So, dude, this guy has almost 1,500 base defense. That helps him out. He has a 3.7 multiplier on his Battlestorm ability. This ability smacks, man. It's an AoE three-turn cooldown, 75% chance to provoke. Also, decrease attack on all enemies for two turns if he's under an increased defense, which he has on his A2 ability. His A2 really hits hard as well, although it is a single target. And he has increased defense for three turns on a three-turn cooldown. So he's always going to be landing that decreased attack on his A3. Very, very good champion. One of my faves. Also, that passive increased defense of all allies by 10% of this champion's defense. Yeah, dude, that's it. That's really, really helpful, especially in Clan Boss. All right, number 14 is going to be the only rare on the list. Now, if we're a single target, we would include Armager as well for his A2 ability. Uh, and that wouldn't even be a rare. It'd be an uncommon, wouldn't it? But the only rare on this list, guys, is going to be, you could probably guess, it's Marques. So only 1,013 base defense. Uh, but... She hits like a truck with this A2 ability. Crush the weak and crush it does, guys. So it has a 4.6 multiplier on defense plus a 3 multiplier on a second hit if they're under weaken. So this was a tough one because if they're all under weaken, I mean, we have a massive, it's the hardest hitting nuke, I guess, out there. Uh, her along with maybe Deathless, right? We'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but really, it does depend on that weaken. It is a dependent. Uh, not just her weaken, but anybody setting her up with a weaken. It will trigger that second attack, and that can be just a massive attack. 4.6 plus A3. All right, next up is going to be, she's fun to play in the arena. She's a fun arena nuker. A little slow, but really, really cool. All right, next up we have Undead. Dead, none other than Balthus Drog Lord. So this is a very interesting champion. We haven't talked about him much on the channel at all. He's got like the dual purple shields going on right now. He's actually got a cool look about him, huh? I like the aesthetics on this guy. Look at the, uh, he's just like this big. I should note, I'm having some digestive distress. <laughs> Skeleton dude in armor. Just no big deal with a double shield. Love it. You get it, Ash. You got a double shield, man. We got it. All right. An AoE with decreased crit rate on the A2 ability. And this has a 4.2 defensive multiplier. So a pretty hard hitting Doom Wheels ability with the decreased crit rate. Not too bad. He has a one enemy provoke on his A3 ability. So overall, I have to be honest with you guys. I'm not a massive fan of this champion, but hey, at least he can hit hard with that A2. I kind of put him up there with like Grimskin in terms of one of the more underwhelming champions on the list personally uh but not to say that he's total trash next up is going to be demon spawn and a lot of you guys may have helicopter helicopter has a lot of base defense 1443 a lot of people forget that how just defensive stir you know defensively uh, robust he is strong sturdy whatever he's a defensive uh you know beast 1443 attacks all enemies plays a shield on all allies for two turns based on his defense which again scales pretty well uh however the cool thing is is this attack also hits pretty hard it's a 3.8 multiplier with that base defense easy to scale up that damage as well you guys know him for his block damage for 
two turns on a four turn cooldown that gets replaced by increased defense when it's removed stolen or expires uh one of the better clan boss uh unkillable comps out there but really can help anybody pretty much anywhere i think that helicoth i think that brogni uh I guess those are two of my absolute fave fusions, personally. There's so many good ones, though, to choose from. Maybe I'll rank fusions in an upcoming video. Next up is number 11. Number 11 is going to be none other than Tormin the Cold. So Tormin the Cold, guys, on his A1, has a two-multiplier AoE attack. That's nice, but obviously that's not why we're talking about him. It's his A3 ability. There's a four-multiplier... Actually, I take that back. A 3.8 multiplier on his A3, but again, really, really good base defense. Over 1,400, 1,421. He's also placing a block buffs if they're under freeze. He also has provoke on people not under freeze with the same ability. And then he has more freeze on his AoE on his A1. And of course, he's known for that really annoying passive if you're going against him or if you don't have a solution when you're going against him inside the arena. All right, number 10, guys. We're moving into the top 10 here. And we're going to go with Martyr, old school champion, Martyr on her A3 ability. This is a four multiplier. Attacks all enemies with decrease attack. Also provoke. And then we have increase attack and counter attack on the three turn cooldown honor a2 which is fantastic again we already talked about this earlier uh with masamoto but having increased defense or iron brago as well uh with a defensive based nuker who can deal some damage is a really really powerful pairing all right coming in at number nine we're gonna go right back to the dwarves guys this dude is growing on me massively Three, two, one, go <laughs> And it's Nari the Lucky. First of all, I, I forgot his defense was that high. 1487. Very, very high defense. Now, on his A2 ability, it's an AoE attack with a 3.3 multiplier. 3.3 multiplier is pretty low compared to what we talked about before, but again, higher on the defense. The good news is on his A3 ability, we're talking about a 3.7 multiplier. An AoE with provoke and counterattack on this champion and is on a four turn cooldown. Again, very uh, hard hitting A3, decently moderately hard hitting a2 and just a bunch of defense nari the lucky is a very very compelling champion i maybe i should just do an updated guide on this champion i'm a real big fan of him number eight is going to be a champion that's uh, kind of new here and it's armdolf armdolf is an epic banner lord uh, uh magic affinity champion excuse me on his base defense 13 32 not too bad for an epic and on his a2 ability we're getting an aoe attack 100 chance of placing a weakened debuff big version and has a 50 percent chance of placing a fear debuff for one turn this is actually a pretty good ability on a three turn cooldown and it hits pretty hard it is a 4.1 multiplier on this uh a2 ability from armdolf have any of you guys invested in armdolf i have not built him personally but i was surprised at that multiplier all right coming in at number seven guys champion that pretty much all of you guys have probably heard of it's none other than Vizix the unbowed so Vizix is a beast she has two hard hitting aoe attacks on her a3 it's a 4.1 multiplier 1476 base defense now we're talking on the a2 it's a 3.5 multiplier so yeah her a3 single combat hits harder both on a three turn cooldown but this one also hits decently hard so this can really deal some serious damage as well coming in at number six guys is going to be none other than deathless now i mentioned her earlier i didn't know how to rank deathless in this video because grim revenge excuse me kind of like Marquez. if the situation is perfect it can be one of if not the hardest hitting defensive abilities inside the entire game attacks all enemies this attack will always be critical if there are two more dead allies damage increases according to the number of dead allies so this has a a four base multiplier plus one for every number of dead ally so if you have three dead allies we're rocking a seven base multiplier on this attack that's pretty insane <laughs> so there we go there you go so it depends on the number of dead allies but it could be one of the hardest hitting attacks what is her base defense it's pretty low there at 1156 but still if you're hitting a seven or an eight multiplier that is very very hard all right you can have some fun with that champion coming in at number five we're moving into the top five here guys 
At number five, it's going to be Tatura Reimheit. Tatura Reimheit on the A3 ability. It's an AoE attack. Perfect veil on all allies, on, uh, except this champion for two turns. Also place a shield buff on this champion for two turns, equal to 20% of the damage inflicted. And that's great because it inflicts a lot of damage. This is a very hard hitting attack, guys. A lot of people don't build Tatura and 1430. Two is really solid base defense too. A lot of people don't build Tatura historically for damage, but you're missing out if you want to, if you can get it in there, right? Because that out, uh, other world breach, excuse me, the A3, again, a 4.2 multiplier with that base defense makes it one of the best uh, defensive base nukes in the game. We also have increased defense and block debuffs for two turns on a three turn cooldown. Man, every time I look at Tatura's kit, I'm reminded just how good this champion is. Another very, very good fusion. Next up, number four, guys, is going to be a brand new champion, Ragash. So Ragash on the A2, first of all, 1443 again. Everybody from here on out is going to have really, really solid. Actually, I lied. Most every champion from here on out is going to have very, very solid uh, base defense. That is the case with, case with Ragash. On the A2, we get decreased defense. We get a stun, three turn cooldown, and a 4.3 multiplier very, very, very hard-hitting ability. Inches him right above Tatura Reimheide on the overall rankings. Coming in at number three, guys, and I, I'm a big fan of Ragash. Really, really fun champion to mess around with. Uh, next up, number three. The champion with... Is it the highest multiplier? No, it's not, but very close to. It's Drekstar Blood Twin, guys. So some of you might, this might not come as a surprise. Some of you might already know this, but this Burning Lash hits like a truck. If you have him built out with 100% crit rate and a little bit of crit damage as kind of a defensive-based nuker, this hits really hard. It has a 5.2 multiplier. Now his defense, almost 1,400, so not bad at all, but not as high as some of the other champions that we've talked about so far on the list, but still with a 5.2 multiplier yeah that makes him one of the hardest hitting defensive champions in the game obviously he's known for getting the most damage out of his passive while keeping himself alive with the a1 ability a triple hitter as well on the a1 great for giant slayer all right let's go in to the top two here guys any guesses any guesses the second hardest hitting champion in the game defensive base is going to be in the Ogren tribe. It's none other than Ignatius. So Ignatius, similar to what we talked about with Chris, he has two AoE attacks. First of all, base defense is kind of low. If his base defense was a little bit higher, it wouldn't even be close. Ignatius would be the best nuker in the game, bar none, no one's even close. However, he makes up for it with multipliers what he lacks on his defense. Uh, on the AoE, on the A2 ability, it's a 4.9 multiplier on Battle Shout. That's an AoE 75% chance of a provoke. On his A3 ability, it's a 5.6 multiplier. I wanna say that is the highest number that we have read and we will read in today's video. A 5.6 multiplier on an AoE with HP burn that cannot be resisted on a five turn cooldown. Ignatius can smack, he can deal some serious damage uh, and provoke and lay down the HP burn that can't be resisted. A very, very, very competent defensive based nuker and HP burner. Number one in the game, any guesses guys? Some of you guys know, after his more recent buff, it is Solus. <clears throat> Hello, how are you doing today? I really, really love Solus now, guys. They boosted his base defense, they boosted his speed. Now he's rocking a 1421 on his base defense and his A3 ability with a 4.9 multiplier in that base defense makes it the hardest hitting AoE defensive base nuke in the game. Again, with all apologies to Deathless and Marquez, depending on how you're using them. Solus, I use inside the arena as one of my three main nukers on one of my tag team arena teams. I'd love to make a video on my tag team arena teams, but I'm a little bit hesitant because it's so pay to win. I don't like it. You know, like they're all legendaries or the void legendaries. I don't like it. I think I only include maybe two epics in all three of my teams total. I don't like it. Anyway, Reign of Terror, AoE attack, increase the duration of all debuffs on each target by one turn. This but then places a provoke debuff on all enemies for one turn. So we get the AoE provoke 
with the 4.9 multiplier, but we're not done yet. A shield on this champion for two turns equal to 30% of the damage inflicted. Damage increases by 10% for each debuff on the target. So if you have some debuffs, if you go in there with a Madame Ceres, you're gonna get a, a plus 20% damage on everybody, just setting him up with, you know, removing the buffs from all enemies and placing a couple debuffs. If you're placing four, five, six debuffs on all enemies, well, it's gonna be insane damage. Uh, and that's already off of a very, very high multiplier at 4.9 anyway, plus the bonus damage. On the A2, it's three times at random. Each has a 100% chance to remove all buffs. Also plays a provoke de uh, debuff for one turn if a buff was removed by the skill, and the provoke cannot be resisted on his A2 ability. So yeah, man, Solus is a very, very fun, powerful champion inside the game. I do want to give one other shout out here, guys. Let me know if, if I forget somebody who you're a big fan of. There's a lot of good defensive based nukers that I did not include because there's a ton of champions that are from like a three to a four multiplier, three to 3.5 multipliers on their AOE attacks. I could really spend all day talking about them. We have the bear is one of them with his A3 ability. We have Mithrala Lifebane is right there. Just missed the cut. She has a really good AOE attack here on the A2 ability. Just, you know, I, I guess depending on the defense, depending on the multipliers, I guess you can make a, her, a case for her over Masamoto, over maybe Vala, maybe the bottom champions on the list. Uh, so just a little shout out there to Mithrala Lifebane as well. Uh, and one, one final shout out, guys. One final one that just missed the cut is Kira the Watcher. On her A2, 1409 base uh, defense. On her A2, it's a 3.7 multiplier. So actually, probably should have been on the list here now that I look at it. Uh, attacks all enemies, 100% chance of decreasing the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn. Also has a 100% chance of placing a decrease accuracy for two turns. Very cool new champion added to the game. She looks like she can stay alive pretty well, huh? I mean, she's uh, she's literally wearing stone skin, it looks like there. Is that a mask or is it a helmet? It's a helmet. It's a helmet, Ash! All right, guys, before this video goes too far off the, uh, the rails, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. Have a lovely day, and as always, take care, guys.